Hey, Viking fans, it's time for five bold predictions for this upcoming season next in three, two, one. Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at Skull World. Make sure you hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment. I want to hear what you got to say. I will respond. I promise. Let's go. Let's go. Top five predictions of the Minnesota Vikings this year. Let's see what we got. I'm ready. I don't know about you. I'm ready. Of course. Here we go. Five bold predictions. Number one, the Vikings will be top five in causing turnovers. Why do I think this? I was watching the preseason and seeing special teams make plays, defense make plays, guys just not, you know, guys who you didn't expect stepping up the type of defense, Jay Ward causing that strip sack, you know, Najee Harris making a hit. You know, we got Troy Dye stepping in front of a pass. I think we're going to cause confusion. We're going to cause turnovers. And much like um, much like Brian Flores, the second year with Miami, causing turnovers, top in the league. So top five in the league, just for the fact that we got, we got guys, we got speed, we got guys flying to the ball. Uh, some guys are just naturally good at causing turnovers, like a – Awesome law. I and then just just the sheer aggressiveness of the defense. Well, we may not lack in high end name talent. We make up for in speed, youth, and aggression. That's what we got. We got we got guys that are aren't known yet, but are about to be known. And that's why I feel about this defense. We're gonna cause turnovers of anything. I don't care about yards. We're stopping them before they get the goal line because we're causing a sack, a strip sack. We're causing a pick. We're going to step in front of a few. Murphy, legitimate number one cornerback. Let's go. Um, we got Daniil Hunter just playing more naturally fast. I just, I, I just can't wait. We got, you know, we got Davenport. If he stays healthy, he's going to do it. But hey, Pace Jr. He's gonna be he's gonna be wreaking havoc in there. He's just gonna be a missile. Awesome is gonna be a missile. Hicks is just a he's gonna pound people on rundowns. I you know Harrison Smith coming off the edge or or just hitting people. We got a lot of speed. Lewis Seen probably the fastest player on the defense. You know he might come in there. Metellus he's just aggressive. We got a guys that are downhill players and can play side to side. You know, they're fast laterally. They're just attacking type players. They're not well known, but they're the right guys for the job. And that's what I'm talking about. Vikings top five and causing turnovers. Here we got Vikings. We'll pick up one player on each side of the ball in trade or free agency. We've, uh, we got some cap space. We got some potential moves we can make. There'll be cheaper after the break. If it's a Dalton and Reisner, it's a Dalton Reisner. But I, or if it's a uh, Keem Hicks, um, it's an Akeem Hicks. I, I want a run stuffer. I want a guy that can clog up that middle. I want an offensive lineman that can pass block. Those are the two wants right now. But hey, we're gonna make moves. We're gonna we're gonna be in a situation where we're going for it, and that's why I say we're gonna pick up a guy on each side of the ball. But I do like um, what we did with the offensive line, picking up uh, Quisenberry, a couple other guys that we got on the practice squad. We improved the depth of that line, and I'm, I'm, I thank you, Quasey, for addressing that issue. But we need a pass blocker in the interior. We need, we need another guy. We need another guy. We'll see who it is. We'll find out. But I'm not gonna. I didn't. I was gonna make this a bold prediction, but our offensive line is gonna be improved. That's so vague, so I didn't make it a bold prediction. Our offensive line is going to be more cohesive and is going is going to co- there's going to be less sacks, less pressures, significant drop in those areas. 
give give a shout out to these guys working hard in the off season, getting you know getting fine tuned, getting in, getting to know their strengths and weaknesses, just coached up. Let's go, let's go. And those left and right tackles, best in the game, man. We got we're like the only team with two guys ranked PFF grade in the top ten of all tackles. Let's go. Vikings will be top three in scoring in the league. Yes, scoring. We may not kill it in yards because the turnovers are going to short fields. We're going to score points. I was going to go bold predictions to Kirk Cousins throwing over 40, ha- having an MVP vote. Um, That's political. I, it's tough to judge. But, hey, all things going up, you know, all things pointing upwards with Kirk Cousins and his popularity doing NFL commercials, for heaven's sake, that people will be more inclined to believe in him, not go out on a limb on him. You know, it won't be controversial because of what he did last year and his popularity at this point has never been higher. So, you know, he's not, he's not doing pizza ads. He's doing, you know, he's on a national television uh, ad. So let's go, let's go. But top three in scoring in the league, easily uh, attainable. Easily attainable. You're going to have the top three, if not top one, by the end of the year receiving core. It's, you know, you lean towards Cincinnati and all, whatever. But, you know, there's a couple, you know, even uh, even the, even the uh, Philly, Philadelphia Eagles have a pretty good receiving core, right? So, but think when you throw in our tight end, so hey, we got we're gonna have a top three receiving core, tight end combo, whatever. We're gonna there's a potentially that we might have four guys over 700 yards. That's that's insane. Let's go. I'm ready for it. And then throw in the running back who can catch. You know, you might have a thousand yard runner with 400 you know yards receiving with Alexander Madison. And if they share the load, even better. Even better. We got our future sitting there. We got Alexander Madison on a two-year deal. We, we're we looking good for the f- future. We're looking good, but we're looking good now. This offense is legit. This is, you know, creativity is getting better. Our running game looked, looked like we were more creative in the preseason, pulling guards and traps, stuff like that. I, I'm looking forward to it. The Vikings will be top three in scoring in this league. Mark my words. Book it. All right, Vikings D finishes top 10 in scoring, but bottom 10 in yards. This is the Patriot way, man. These guys went to the Super Bowl doing stuff like this. Why do I say top 10 in scoring? That means I think we're going to keep them from getting in the end zone because of turnovers. We're going to cut drive short for people. They're, they're just, you know, but they might drive all the way down the field be, or have a big play <laughs> because we went uh, single high safety or no high safety and one of our corners got burned on a and while we were blitzing these all things can happen there are teams that won super bowls with top 10 in scoring bottom 10 in yards Mu- i would much rather much rather have the scoring and even in 2019 we were like top 5 in scoring but you know 15th in yards so both things can happen man that's good. That's my bullish prediction. Top 10 in scoring. And I've already made that prediction, but I'm saying that we're actually going to be top bottom 10. So bottom 12. So 21 and below to 32 in yards. And we're still going to do this. And that is Vikings finish in the two seed. And why do I do that? Because the East is going to be Philadelphia. The other, you know, the other teams in the NFC East, won't be in the you, know, you won't have a division title the south division is not so good right no no standout team there and then the uh the west you're gonna have san francisco but they're gonna they're gonna lose to us and we'll have the tiebreaker so that we're gonna have a basically a half game up on them all year long because we're gonna beat them san francisco yes we're going to beat San Francisco. So let's go. Let's go. That puts us in the two seed. And I would be surprised that NFC East with the Cowboys in Philly might 
could, they could easily lose two games to the Cowboys. They have a stacked roster. So who knows? Maybe we're second seed to the Cowboys. I don't know. But the Eagles, they have a tough road. We got a tough road. But we're going to beat the Eagles or we're going to beat the uh, we're going to beat the San Francisco 49ers. We may lose the Eagles in a short week on a Thursday in Philadelphia. That's that that is just a tough place to go on a short week. But because we beat San Francisco, we are going to hold the, uh, you know, the tiebreaker. That's how it's going to be. They're going to be struggling. Their rookie quarterback from last year. Now he's a second year. He's going to he's going to struggle They're The league's going to find out who he is and they're going to play to his uh, strengths. They're going to be able to figure him out. The league always figures everybody out. And we just got a better veteran quarterback and more offensive weapons. They're, theirs are fine. Ours are better. Let's go. Let's go. That's the Vikings. That's that's my five bold predictions. Five bold predictions. Let's go. Let's go. Now make sure you Hulk smash the like button. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 